In this lesson, we'll introduce the concepts of bias and mean square error for the evaluation of estimator performance, and we'll demonstrate how to evaluate those performance measures for a couple simple estimation problems. Well, as we've discussed in previous lessons, in our general estimation problem for deterministic but unknown parameters, we envision a parameter alpha that influences statistical model for an observation x, which we then process with an estimator g of x to produce an estimate alpha hat. A natural question to ask then, once we've picked an estimator, is how good is that estimator? Well, to evaluate the performance of the estimator, we'll focus our attention on the estimation error as defined by the difference between the value for our estimate and the value for our parameter, which, by using the functional form for the estimator, we see that this is a function of the random observation or measurement x. One statistical measure of this error, then, is its expected value which, because the parameter is deterministic, involves only the expected value of the estimate, which will ultimately involve an expected value for a function of the random observation x. Once we take this expectation, then, we will in general have a function of the parameter alpha, which will depend on the specific form for the estimator alpha hat. And we'll refer to this expected value of the error as the bias for the estimator, when the bias is equal to zero, we'll say that the estimator is unbiased. Otherwise, we'll say that it is biased. As an example, let's consider a situation where the elements of the observation vector are independent, identically distributed random variables, each with a mean mu and a standard deviation sigma. Furthermore, let's assume that the standard deviation is known, but the mean is an unknown parameter that we need to estimate. Now, one possible estimator is the sample mean, which for this problem turns out to be the maximum likelihood estimator. And the expected value for this estimator is the sum of the expected values for each element of the observation vector, which turns out to be the sum of the means, so that the expected value for the estimator is equal to the unknown parameter mu. And in this case, we say that the estimator is unbiased. As another example, let's suppose that the elements of the observation vector are independent, identically distributed Gaussian random variables, each with zero mean and a standard deviation of sigma, where the standard deviation sigma now is the unknown parameter. A possible estimator for the standard deviation is the sample mean for the absolute values of the observation elements. And in this situation, though, this is not the maximum likelihood estimator for this particular parameter. The expected value for this estimator is the sample mean of the expected value for the absolute value for each element of the observed vector. And by using the Gaussian density for the observation x, we can show that each of those expected values is the square root of 2 over pi times the actual standard deviation sigma. And this implies that the expected value for the estimate is the square root of 2 over pi times sigma. Accordingly, the bias is proportional to the parameter, and we say that this estimator is biased. The bias now is sigma times the quantity square root of 2 over pi minus 1. Now, because this bias is a function of this unknown parameter, we cannot perform a simple manipulation of this estimator to make it unbiased. Now, in situations where the bias is not a function of the unknown parameter, we will, in general, be able to adjust the estimator to make it unbiased if that's something that we want. Now, all other things being equal, we'll typically prefer an estimator that is unbiased. However, all other things are typically not equal, and one of those things is, a measure, is any measure of the variability of the estimation error. To address this for scalar parameters, we'll address the variability of the error by examining the mean square error between the estimate and the parameter. And this is simply the expected value of the square of the estimation error. For vector parameters, for which the units for all of the parameters are the same, we might be interested in the total mean square error for the parameter estimates, which is the sum of the individual mean square errors for each parameter.
Now, for situations in which the parameters have different units, though, we'll be more interested in the mean square error for each individual parameter. And even when they do have the same units, we'll often still be interested in the individual mean square errors. Well, let's look more closely at the mean square error for a scalar parameter. Now, we won't change the value if we add and subtract the expected value, or the mean for the estimate, which then we can expand into three terms. The first term, the expected value of the estimate minus its mean, quantity squared, is the variance for the estimate. The second term, the square of the expected value of the estimate minus the actual value for the parameter, is the square of the bias. And because the expected value for the estimate here is a deterministic value, the third term contains the expected value of alpha hat minus the expected value of alpha hat, which is zero. Therefore, the mean square error is the variance for the estimator plus the square of the bias for the estimator. Now this relationship is often helpful for evaluating the mean square error for estimators. And here we've used a notation for the variance for the estimator that explicitly shows that in general this variance might depend on the value for the unknown parameter. Well, let's return to the problem where we know the standard deviation, but the mean for the observation elements is unknown and the estimator is the sample mean. Because the elements of the summation are independent, each of the xn's are independent. The variance for this estimator is the sum of the individual variances, scaled by the leading scale factor of 1 over n squared. Each of the variances are equal to sigma squared, so that the variance for the estimate is equal to sigma squared divided by n, which is the number of elements in the vector. And because the bias for this estimator is zero, the mean square error is equal to this variance. This implies that the mean square error is inversely proportional to the number of elements in our observation vector. Now let's look at our other previous example where the data have zero mean and known and unknown standard deviation sigma and the estimator for sigma is the sample mean for the absolute values of each element in the data vector. Now, because the data are independent, the variance for this estimate is the sum of the variances for the absolute values times the square again of the leading factor, 1 over n. Again, using the Gaussian density, we can show that the variance for the absolute value of a zero mean Gaussian random variable is pi minus 2 over pi times the variance for the random variable, which is sigma squared. In that case, the variance for the estimate is pi minus 2 over n times pi times sigma squared. The mean square error is this variance plus the square of the bias, which when we use our previous value for the bias, provides an expression that depends on the number of elements in the, in the observation vector and the actual value for the parameter sigma. Now for vector parameters, especially when the parameters do not have the same units, we'll often be interested in the covariance for the estimator, which can be computed in one of two ways. And the second way is often the most convenient. Then if we want the expected value for the outer product of the estimation error vector, we can relate that to the covariance and the bias for the estimator. From that, we could obtain the individual mean square errors for each parameter as the diagonal elements of this matrix. And we can compute the total mean square error, if desired, as the trace of this matrix. Well, in summary, bias and mean square error are two of the most widely used measures of estimator performance for the estimation of deterministic parameters, largely because the first and second order statistics for the estimator are often tractable for analysis.